Hello and welcome to another AFCB TV preview show. I'm here joined by Sky Sports presenter Mark McAdam and we'll be looking back over everything that's gone on in the last two weeks. Here's what's coming up. We'll be looking back at that 2-1 loss at St James's Park. We'll also be looking at the success over the international break. And finally, we'll be looking ahead to this weekend's game against Arsenal here at Vitality Stadium. But first things first, let's rewind the clock two weeks and go back to that game at St James's Park. Here are the short highlights. As Adam Smith for company, level with the edge of the form of penalty here. Goes back to the USA international, Deandre Yedlin, who's chasing one down the right-hand side here, up against Adam Smith. Yedlin's pulled back, what a save by Begovic, and the rebound is in! Solomon Rondon has given Newcastle a very early lead here. Six minutes gone, the Cherries talked about trying to silence the home fans, so they've done the opposite. They've given them an opportunity to get out of their seats. Solomon Rondon, and it is 1-0. down the right side now for Matt Ritchie, halfway inside Newcastle territory, he hasn't scored against Bournemouth in the Premier League meeting since he left the south coast, now Kennedy left hand side, the applause there for Ritchie's ball, it's swung in towards Rondon, and it is 2-0 to Newcastle, both for Solomon Rondon, Bournemouth not dealing with the cross, and Rondon powering a header into the top left corner past Begovic, six minutes before half time, In comes the corner, the stupid head of this time, and it is in! And it's a first Bournemouth goal for Jefferson Lerma, who's picked his moment, stooping at the near post to put ahead of pass to Bravka, and Bournemouth have silenced St James's Park, and have at last managed to get some foothold in the game. They rush back to set up before half-time. It is Newcastle 2, Bournemouth 1. Well, a goal on half-time from Jefferson Lerma wasn't enough there. And Mark, it was a tough day at the office, wasn't it? Yeah, a disappointing result. I think, um, you know, obviously the fact that Jefferson got his first goal was brilliant for the club. And, and everyone thought when we, we got back into the game that we'd be able to push on and get another few goals. But it just wasn't to be. Obviously, memories come back at that time that Stephen Cook got that last-minute winner there the season before. And you thought there might be something special on the cards. Because that's one thing we've seen this season for Bournemouth, that never-say-die attitude. But unfortunately... It wasn't to be. And you said Jefferson Lerma there. One positive was that he got his first goal for the club. I think it's great. I think you've seen Jefferson progress week in, week out and develop as a player. We're really starting to see the potential within him now and the type of asset he is because obviously a huge amount of money for the club. But the fact that he's playing week in, week out, he's settling into training, his English is improving, he's understanding his surroundings and the players around him understanding him as well is, is massive. The thing about Jefferson is he's such a physically aggressive player. You can see him being involved with the game you can see his impact on the other players and what he does is he brings a bit of a solidness to the club that we've perhaps not had before because he is such a physical presence and that means the other players can be more free going forward so you've got an asset defensively and someone that's powerful when they get on the ball and move forward as well and, and that's fantastic and like I say he can only get better. Absolutely and that partnership with Lewis Cook it's really coming to fruition now isn't it? You've got two very different players that have a different skill set and have so much quality and so much technical ability as well but they come together really really nicely and I think that's another exciting thing I keep talking about the future but these two players the more they play together the better they'll become the better they'll understand each other and the players around them will understand how they're going to maneuver and, and shift the ball through midfield uh, and it's an exciting partnership it's a young partnership as well and there's so much potential with those players to get to get forward to get together work defensively and open doors and, and that's what Bournemouth are about it's about going forward being a 
aggressive uh, and playing good football with a tempo and both those players are young energetic and fit and they can make that happen and we have to talk about Adam Smith as well it's such a blow to lose him so early on in the season as well isn't it with such a busy period coming up as well it's so heartbreaking when any player gets any form of an injury particularly someone as, as nice as Adam Smith he's such a great lad you've seen this season how important he is how much pace he has down that channel and again you've seen his versatility you know it's not many right backs in the Premier League that would keep good quality left backs out the side and you've seen that this season from Smudge he's been down that left hand side he's been down the right hand side he offers so much going forward and defensively uh, I think the one positive was that initially everyone thought it was going to be a long term injury maybe eight nine months the fact it's only three months uh, is, is, is a key positive um, I'm sure he's quite happy as well because he's got a new baby so he can spend a bit of time with the baby over Christmas and, and relax and things and then come the start of the new year he'll be he'll be getting closer to action and, and fit and fighting and, and ready to go and, and it won't be long before he's back in the team because he's such an asset for the club and of course we're not short of options at left back we've got Charlie Daniels and of course Diego Rico yeah two great players um, that have uh, brought something very different to the club obviously everyone knows about Chaz and, and his quality and his experience and, and a season on season he just keeps getting better he keeps improving he, be he becomes a better left pack every time you see him play uh, and that's been fantastic again Diego brings something different uh, a different quality uh, he's got a superb left foot he's got the ability to whip in some quality balls into the box which is great for our strikers he's good he's big he's physical he brings something defensively that perhaps Chaz hasn't got but two great players that are going to both push each other as they look to get in that starting 11 and obviously look forward to the, the remainder of the season and as you say pushing each other that competition for places is is really vital isn't it oh yeah absolutely every single place is up for grabs I think there are no players at Bournemouth that feel they are starters week in, week out. And that can only be a good thing for the club and for Eddie Howe because it keeps everyone on their toes. Everyone wants to improve. Everyone wants to become better at what they do and, and earn that jersey. Uh, and you look throughout our whole squad, probably the strong, strongest squad we've ever had at Bournemouth um, in terms of the Premier League squads. There's so much quality there and they're all pushing each other and that's, that's only a good thing. And just going back to that Newcastle game, despite the defeat, they're still sixth in the table. That's the great thing about Bournemouth. You know, we've got so many points on the board at the moment that every single time uh, they go out to play, even if it's a disappointing result, their position in the league isn't being affected. Um, obviously, there's a little gap between them and Arsenal now, which you don't want those gaps to appear. But if we can remain in those sort of fifth, sixth, seventh places for as long as possible, then who knows what will happen this season. Well, after that Newcastle game, seven of our players went on international duty and Callum Wilson was one of those. Here's what he had to say just before heading off. First things first, Callum, I'm sure I'm joined by everyone in the AFC Bournemouth community to, to say congratulations and well done for the, your first Made in England call. Thank you. Um, yeah, obviously it's nice to obviously um, to, to get noticed for the hard work um, that I've put in over the years. Um, had a call from my manager here congratulating me and um, and then, yeah, I just sort of kept it to myself really. Um, I've just sort of kept my feet on the ground, um, put my phone away in the cupboard, um, tried to, to keep everything as normal as possible, you know. I had a lot of friends and family wishing me well and um, sending their congratulations and things like that. But um, I'm obviously looking to, to, to try and go there, enjoy it and hopefully represent my country at some point. Well, represent his country he certainly did and what a debut it was for him, Mark. It's incredible. Uh, I remember when Callum first came to the club, I remember watching him play for Coventry and uh, he was a superb asset for them. He had so much pace, he had so much character. I remember seeing him score a couple of goals at the time. Actually, Coventry were playing at Northampton because they had the problems with the Rico Arena. So there was hardly any fans in the stadium, but he was doing his stuff. And then when he signed for Bournemouth, I was really pleased because I knew there was so much potential in him as a player, as a character as well. He brings something different to the club. You never see him when he's not smiling. Even when he was suffering the, the, the dark days of his injuries and all that sort of stuff, you saw Callum with a smile on his face and, and he was the heartbeat of the squad in the dressing room and in and around the training ground. And to see him go from non-league to League One, to the Championship, the Premier League, and now doing it on the international stage. And then to score as well at Wembley, it's the stuff of, of dreams. It's a, a real fairy tale. I'm so pleased for him and his, and his family because he, he really does deserve it. And of course, he had some chances in that first half as well. So he could have put a few away, but it did eventually come in the second half, which was really pleasing. That's the thing, knowing Callum as we do, he will be disappointed about the chances he missed, not about the one he scored at Wembley. Um, and that's always the way. You, you speak to Callum after games and he'll say, oh, I should have had two or three there, I should have had four or five, and he scores two and he should have had four. It's, it's always 
always looking to improve himself. He's always looking to get more goals and be a better asset for the team. Um, so yeah, you talk to him, he'll probably be disappointed with those chances. But I think that that goes into insignificance when you look at the bigger picture of, of what he's achieved, where he's come from, where he's he's gone. And the most exciting thing for him is he's, he's now got that goal for England on his debut. So looking forward, there's no pressure now. People know he can score goals. And I think that's what's exciting. And we saw already how mentioned it in the press conference today. He's going to want to improve even more so, so that the next time the England squad is announced, he's involved. And then, of course, the European Championships, World Cups. He's got ambitions. He's a very ambitious player, and that can only be a good thing for Bournemouth because he'll want to improve. Absolutely. And we have to mention Ryan Fraser as well, who also got his first goal for his country. First goal for Scotland against Albania. Yeah, superb moment for, for the wee man. He's been brilliant this season. We've seen it since he joined the club. He progresses, he gets quicker, he gets better. He's improved so much. And... Perhaps at first he was sort of in and out of the side, obviously a lone spell at Ipswich was key for him. But now this season, he's he's one of the, the first names on the team sheet. Uh, he's got so much quality going forward. He's so dangerous. He's only small, but his pace will frighten the life out of defenders in the Premier League. And for him to score for Scotland is, is brilliant because he's had a couple of difficult moments with, with injury on international duty. So to play in both games, be involved, to score. And obviously for them to qualify in the Nations League is, is superb for Scotland. Absolutely. And he did get his first goal, but he also got two assists against Israel well as well yeah you can't stop him at the moment I think he's uh, his ratio to goals and assists uh, is superb uh, I think he, he's really punching with some of the big hitters in European football right now uh, and that can only be an exciting thing for Bournemouth you know we see him out here at the Vitality where he is terrorizing defenses he's getting up and down he's defensively improved as well as a player but he constantly carries that threat and any player with pace is always dangerous at any time in the Premier League Absolutely, and we have to mention Jack Simpson too, who made his debut for England under 21s. That's great. I know Jack would be delighted with that and it's such a significant moment for him and his career when you look at the things he's achieved as a player perhaps obviously not involved as much this season in the Premier League squad as he'd want to be uh, and there was obviously talk of a, a potential loan move but he signed a new contract he's at the club his long-term future is at the club and he's another one that's an exciting prospect for Eddie Howe. And brilliant for the club that he's come through the academy to, to make that jump to England under 21s. We've seen it for years at Bournemouth um, so many players come through the academy they get their chance they're in and around the first team and then they make their debut and, and, and they're involved at the highest level and it becomes increasingly difficult for those players to do it because of the the standard at which we're now at you know when I was at the club many many years ago in league one the difference between the reserves and the fringe players in the first team wasn't that great whereas now it's huge you know particularly for Bournemouth playing in the Premier League and, and being a, a top 10 at the moment um, so for, for Jack to do that and, and be around this setup and be where he is in, in his career at the moment is, is an even more significant achievement. Well, next up for AFC Bournemouth is the visit of Arsenal here at Vitality Stadium. Let's take a look at what happened when they visited last year. Saints moved above them yesterday with their point at Watford. A victory back to Awobi again, and this move has taken them forward with danger. Bayern's now inside the penalty area, and Bayern is not denied by Begovic. It bounces in. It's Hector Bayern's goal, and Arsenal are in front. Begovic thought he'd done enough. He got legs on it. It looped up into the air, and then agonisingly dropped over the line. Bournemouth nil, Arsenal one. Well, this is now what Bournemouth are toying with, isn't it? Committing bodies forward, trying to find an equaliser, but realising it might leave them exposed. Fraser's ball in. Oh, Wilson's got there ahead of Jack, and Bournemouth have an equaliser. Callum Wilson, it's Bournemouth one, Arsenal one. It's three goals in three games against the Gunners for Callum Wilson, and the Cherries' leading scorer gives them parity against the Gunners. Well. <laughs> You'd have it no other way, would you? Fraser on the right-hand side. He's got so much to do. It's an absolute world of a ball if he can get it across the face of goal. And then the next question is, can Callum just get there? He's onside, don't worry about that, folks. Can Callum just get there before check? Nicks it, and it's a goal. Now Lewis Cook, Cook, well that might be a brilliant ball, it is, it's Callum Wilson, it's laid off for Ive, Jordan Ive scores his first Bournemouth goal, Wilson's made it, but Ive scores it, and Bournemouth are in front against Arsenal, Jordan Ive at last. Well, you just can't believe it, 
It had to come at some stage, yeah, but just been getting better and better and better since the Chelsea game, I think. And for him to be up there, it was a great ball in again. I think it was Cookie that landed it right away onto Callum's chest. One, two touches, a little laid back, and he's hit it hard and low. Concentrated keeper on target, and it's gone through the goalkeeper. Good finish. That has been a long time coming for Jordan Ibe. But it's about the Bournemouth move and the build-up that should be spoken about. It's such a delicate ball, originally from Smith towards Wilson, who had his back to goal, took a couple of touches, then just got out the way so Ibe could lash it beyond Petacek. We're in the fifth minute of stoppage time, moving into the sixth. It's all over. It's a historic win for Bournemouth. For the first time in their history, they have beaten Arsenal, and it's a critical win for them as well. Two goals to one, 13th tonight in the Premier League table, away from that relegation zone. Wilson and I with the goals. Well, there we go. Goals from Callum Wilson and Jordan Ives saw the Cherries record a memorable victory back in January. Mark, it's going to be a slightly different game this year with the Unai Emery's Arsenal going very well. Yeah, unbeaten in 16 games before the match. So the challenge is there for, for Bournemouth and Eddie Howe. Can we find a way to, to end that run? Um, we've seen recently they've, they've just stuttered slightly with a couple of disappointing results uh, and, and only getting the draw. So maybe now is a, is a good time. Obviously, Arsenal will have a lot of players that go to international break. So whether or not they'll come back in different phases of fitness and, and, and fatigue, that'll be an interesting point. It's on Super Sunday. It's always exciting when you're live in front of the TV cameras because the world is watching. And if Bournemouth can replicate that performance, that first 25, 30 minutes against Manchester United for, for sort of 70, 80 minutes against Arsenal, I really fancy us because... Bournemouth like to play against teams that want to play and Arsenal are a team that want to play and I think it's set up beautifully. Fifth against sixth, this is an exciting one and this could be a, a really pivotal moment in the season where Bournemouth stamp their mark on the Premier League and say, we're not just having a good season, we're here to compete. Absolutely and Arsenal, while they haven't lost in 16 games, they've only drawn their last three Premier League games so that's something to be encouraged by, isn't it? Yeah, I definitely think any team will hold no fear for Bournemouth at the moment. They're in a good moment, they're in good form, they're playing well, particularly at the vitality. They've got pace and energy about the team, they're playing some good stuff. So I don't think there'll be any level of fear for Arsenal. There'll be respect, of course, because Arsenal are still Arsenal and they're still one of the great Premier League clubs. Um, but they are going through a transitional period and I think perhaps the Unai Emery effect has, has happened quicker than people might have thought, particularly having started the season with two defeats. But you've started to see the quality that, that they now have. And obviously when you look at Lacazette, uh, and obviously Aubameyang, Mkhitaryan, there are so many good players in that offensive lineup. It's going to be very, very difficult. And Nathan and, and Cookie, if they're picked, uh, will have a, a very tough afternoon on their hands. And you mentioned Lacazette and Aubameyang there. Are they the two to really watch out for on Sunday? Well, I think everyone in the Arsenal team is to watch out for. I think they have a lot of quality. They have so many players that are exciting going forward. They have experience internationally. Uh, a lot of them have won big trophies. Um, but, but certainly that, that attacking front three will be a problem. Um, and that's where we will have to be absolutely at our best. Uh, there are so many good players that are going to cause us problems. You know, you've seen Aubameyang with the goals. Lacazette seems to be quiet for 70 minutes and then he'll pop up with a bit of individual brilliance and, and, and transform the game. And that's the thing about these players at the highest level. You cannot switch off for a moment because they will do one thing in 15 seconds that will end in a goal. And before you know it, you've lost the game. And with Manchester City up next as well, it's, it's a really big game to try and get some points on the board because it's going to be a tough ask next week, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's the great thing about Bournemouth this season. Getting points on the board nice and early, cementing our position in the top 10 is, has been brilliant. What it does is it takes the pressure off of these bigger games. I think there is always an internal pressure from, from Eddie and everyone at the club. We go out and we win, no matter whether it's uh, Fulham at the bottom of the table or Man City at the top of the table. The mentality is always the same. But what happens now, instead of going into a game like Arsenal and Manchester City, where we're going, oh, we could do with four points or we could do with you know, two points or something, we can go in and go, well, we'll get whatever we get. As long as we play the way we want to play, um, the players put their, their best show on uh, and whatever happens will happen because these sides are still far superior on paper than Bournemouth. But the great thing about this game and, and the Premier League is not played on paper. So I think we'll go into it with a no fear attitude. And I think that will suit Bournemouth 
with that freedom when they go forward. And Eddie Howe just said in his pre-match press conference that injury-wise, they're looking they're looking okay, much better than what was first thought after Newcastle. Yeah, there's been a few niggles recently. There's a few players that have been playing with with little uh, niggles that haven't enabled them to be at their absolute 100% peak fitness. But the international break thing is a is a good thing because it gives everyone the chance to to have a few days off to refresh, to rest their bodies because it is so intense in the Premier League. Uh, and I think there's only a, a couple of very minor niggles, and obviously Adam Smith not going to be a Around. Joshua King has been back involved with training, which is which is another positive. Callum Wilson will, will come back with a, the biggest smile on his face. Uh, the same with, with David Brooks, Nathan Aki, of course, involved with that, that France game. So I think the squad is in a really good, healthy place at the moment. There's a good positivity. There's good buzz about the place. Uh, and it's all set up nicely. Arsenal, Bournemouth, Super Sunday, fifth against sixth. It doesn't get any more exciting than that. Absolutely, it's certainly going to be a cracker and if you are coming to Vitality Stadium on Sunday then we wish you a safe trip and hope you enjoy the game. If not, have a lovely weekend and we'll be back next week to preview the game against Manchester City. Thanks for joining us.